Happy New Year, Bainbridge and beyond. Welcome to church. Let's join um, together and sing to our Lord. Ding dong, 
Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. We are in the 12 days of Christmas, so Christmas is not over. I don't care what the radio stations say, and I don't care what the commercials say. It's not Valentine's Day yet. It's still Christmas, and we're going to celebrate and have a good time with that. And since it is still Christmas tide, then uh, we get to sing Christmas songs. So if you are listening online and you have a Christmas song you want sung, not Rudolph, a church Christmas song, let's be specific here. You may put that in the chat bar and, and John Mark will let me know what that is. And later in the service, we're going to sing whatever you would like that's, that's in the hymnal or that we can fake together. So um, be thinking about those here in person, what you would like to sing. And if you need some help, help the Christmas hymns start on page 217 in the hymnal if you want to flip through and, and find your favorites. We are glad to have all of you here this morning and, and all of you who are online. If you're a guest online, please uh, let us know electronically by leaving a message or sending an email or text or something of that nature so we know you are, are visiting with us for the first time. And if you're here as, for the first time, please be sure to stop in the foyer on the way out and we'll tell you a little bit more about our congregation. I apologize to those who are watching live stream. Next week, we will not be uh, doing a live stream service. We're, we don't have um, staffing for that. And so um, you can either choose to check out another congregation and just see what other people do and how we're so much better and awesome. Or you can have your own time of prayer and, and worship. But um, don't panic when you tune in next week and we're not here. Um, we are also not having Bible study again this week. We will start um, after, in a week. So um, just make sure your calendars are accordingly. We will be starting this month a, a new group on Wednesday, uh, the third Wednesday of the month. It's a Lexio Divina group. Now, it's Latin, and I know you're like, ooh, Latin. It, it means it's a way of prayerfully reading, the, reading scripture. And so... Uh, some of you know how to do this. Some of you are like, that sounds really weird, but I might want to try it out. Some of you are like, I have no clue, but hey, why not? So it doesn't matter what your experience with this style of reading scripture is. All are welcome to come, and it's a way of engaging the scripture um, in, a, in a prayerful manner. And so all are encouraged to attend. So uh, that is on the third Wednesday of the month from now on in the evenings. Our um, scripture this morning comes from Ecclesiastes 3. Let us listen for the word of God. There is a season for everything, a time for every matter under the heavens, a time for giving birth and a time for dying, a time for planting and a time for uprooting what is planted, a time for killing and a time for healing, a time for tearing down and a time for building up, a time for crying and a time for laughing, a time for mourning and a time for dancing, a time for throwing stones and a time for gathering stones, a time for embracing and a time to avoid embraces, a time for searching and a time for losing, a time for keeping and a time for throwing away, a time for tearing and a time for repairing, a time for keeping silent and a time for speaking. A time for loving and a time for hating. A time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from all their hard work? I have observed the task that God has given human beings. God has made everything fitting in its time, but has also placed eternity in their hearts without enabling them to discover what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for them but to enjoy themselves and do what's good while they live. Moreover, this is the gift of God, that all people should eat and enjoy the results of their hard work. This is God's word for God's people, and we give God thanks. We have an opportunity to give back to God as a, a thank you for all that God has done for us. Our offering last week was $652. I know that's low. Um, attendance was low. It's Christmas. So we will start the new year off with a little 
bigger amount, hopefully. Uh, and our Christmas offering, which is going to our missionaries, the Bobs, who are serving in Cambodia, has raised $242, so we give thanks for that as well. Peachtree United Methodist is about building relationships with young people through, get this, chess and pizza. Hmm. You see, Reverend Josh Miller, Miller recognized the positive impact that the chess club had on him as a child. And he, he noticed that in his apartment complex, there were a lot of young people. And uh, he went to his church, Peachtree United Methodist, with this idea for a unique ministry. And so they agreed to his idea of a chess club. So they, they found a sponsor who agreed to supply pizza every week, because if you want young people, you bring pizza. It's, it's a huge magnet. But not only that, each child who participated received their own chess kit. Soon there were teen helpers and parents who were willing to assist this group, and the apartment complex even got on board. They were willing to keep their community room open just a little bit longer so that the, in the evening so that these children and, and youth could participate. So Reverend Miller then had the task of getting people to come. You know, pizza only goes so far. So he would stand at the bus stop and invite parents to bring their children to this unique club. And the result was that there were 20 participants, participants ranging in age from 8 to 16. And each week they got a lesson on problem solving and critical thinking as it applies to chess but also to real life. The kids in that program gained self-confidence, patience, and adaptability, and they knew what it was like to be loved by the people of Peachtree United Methodist. Being the church means being creative in the ways that we connect to others in the name of the Christ child. And although we may not have a chess club, we still find our own unique way to connect to those around us. So as we give this morning, either in the back or online or in the mail, let us give praise to God for those gifts. Will you pray with me? God of glorious surprises, like the wise men sent by Herod, we too come as searchers for glimpse of your presence. As, we were, as were the people in those days, we are surprised that we find you not in a palace, but in a stable, surrounded by a family of poor refugees, and worshiped by the lowly shepherds. Like them, our gifts from our wealth seems simultaneously too material and woefully shabby, outshined by what you have given us. Just the same, use our gifts for the works of justice, mercy, and compassion, as would benefit the Savior who sleeps in a manger. It is in his holy name we pray. Amen. Let us continue with song with the beautiful carol, Star Child.
So as you're thinking about what songs we want to sing next, there is the old hymn, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. And Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote the lyrics to this song after facing tragedy in his family and in his life. In 1861, his wife Frances died suddenly, and it just broke his heart, and he sank into depression. And then in 1863, his son Charlie enlisted with the 1st Massachusetts Artillery to fight in the Civil War. In November, he was shot from back to shoulder and nicked his spine. December 8th, Henry brought home his son for the months-long process of healing. And while he was there healing, for his son, healing his son, grieving his wife, he heard the bells on Christmas morning, and it inspired in him hope that peace would come again. And so he wrote this poem, and in 1872 then the poem was set to music. I'm going to read it to you because a lot of times when we hear this sung, there are some crucial verses that are left out because they refer back to the Civil War. So hear these familiar words. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And thought how as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Till ringing, singing on its way, the world revolved from night to day, a voice, a chime, a chant sublime, of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then from each black accursed mouth, the cannons thundered in the south, and with the sound the carols drowned, of peace on earth, goodwill to men. It was as if an earthquake rent the hearthstones of a continent and made forlorn the households born of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And in despair I bowed my head, there is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail. With peace on earth, goodwill to men. So let us sing together this carol of a Christmas hope for peace. So now it's your turn. What shall we sing? What songs have you missed this season? Or what do you want to sing again? It is your choice. I'm going to pick the hardest Christmas song if you don't pick one. 246. 
All right, yes, we do need joy to the world, absolutely. We will sing um, first and fourth verses on page 246. Now you're warmed up. What should we sing next? Two twenty nine, infant holy. Two twenty nine, infant holy, infant lowly. And since it's only a two verse song, we'll do both verses. Two twenty nine. And we will sing first verse. And since we're close to Epiphany, third verse. And um, one, three, and five. 245, first Noel, verses one, three, and five. Certain for 
should we sing next? Two sixty one, because Ethel says it's a New Year slash Christmas song. Oh, you can always—it's my favorite hymn, Ethel. We can always sing this one. That's Lord of the Dance. Um, we're definitely singing one. Um, what? We'll go with one, three, and five again. One, three, five. Keep John Mark on his toes in the back. So, Lord of the Dance, two sixty one. <laughs> Got time? Two fifty four. We three kings. Um, we'll do first verse, first, second, fifth. We three kings.
do one more. 474. 474. Precious Lord, take thy hand. Uh, one and three. 474, Precious Lord, take my hand. Aren't we blessed that we have Vicki who can just roll with this? We thank you for helping us this morning. And that is a perfect transition into prayer because the precious Lord just does. God takes our hands and leads us through the good times and the bad times. But that is what this season is about. It's about an amazing Savior that we have. As we go to our time of prayer, we lift up uh, the Roman Catholic Church this morning. I know that sounds like an odd prayer request, but former Pope Benedict XVI passed away last night. And so we know that that church is in mourning, and so we offer prayers for all those impacted by his death. We also offer prayers this morning for those churches and pastors who have left the United Methodist Church and are now starting on a new journey as the Global Methodist Church. And we pray for blessings on their new adventures and that God would continue to bless their ministries as, as they take new journeys uh, forth from here. But we also pray for the United Methodist churches in our area. And so it is the beginning of the year, so we're back up to the letter A. And so we're praying for Aberdeen and their pastor, David Benjamin, and Elma United Methodist Church and their pastor, Keith Richardson. If you are watching and you're not from our area, please be sure to pray for the pastors and churches in your community. We lift up this morning also Bishop Gregory Palmer and our district superintendent, the Reverend Calvin Alston. We continue to pray that Ukraine and Russia can find peace and that there will be peace on earth, goodwill to all. So let us now go to a time of prayer. We'll start it with a few moments of silent prayer and then we'll conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray.
our God of the ages. We have brought in a new year with celebration and much noise. We rejoice in the gift of another year of life, filled with the accomplishments, goals achieved, and events that will serve as a marker for our memory. Some of these we will revisit gladly with a distant gleam of joy in our eyes. Others will invite familiar feelings of heartache and loss. But now it is a time for new beginnings, to welcome second chances and to start again. We stand on new ground, full of new tomorrows, embracing your gift of hope, knowing that in your grace things do work out, bodies do heal, relationships mend, and life goes on in all its mystery and wonder and splendor. Our Lord, we observe today your marker of the new beginning. We celebrate your new covenant with us. As we make our New Year's resolutions, may they include strengthening our covenant bond with you as a, remember of the gift, as a way to remember the gift of new life in Jesus. And so we begin this new year praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So would you please stand, and if you're at home, sit up straight so you can sing loud enough to wake up anybody who's still sleeping at home from... New Year's Eve, and let us sing our final song together, God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. So go from this place. We have five more days of Christmas to celebrate, and next week we celebrate Epiphany with Reverend Katie Steele. I hope you will enjoy her. She's a wonderful preacher from Children's Hospital, and she will be sharing the service with you. But in the meantime, go in peace with God's comfort and joy in your hearts. Mm -hmm.